In this video, I'm going to do a brief introduction to implicit differentiation, just kind of getting you to understand the underlying concepts of when and how this type of differentiation is different than other forms. Um, so first off, implicit differentiation is needed whenever the equation is in implicit form. Hopefully in a pre-calc class you went over that implicit form so you know what it means. Basically it means your x's and y's are all mixed up in your equation. All right, now, to find the derivative implicitly, you need to realize that the differentiation is taking place with respect to x. This means that when you differentiate terms involving just a plain x, of, of the x's alone, you can differentiate as usual. However, if you differentiate terms involving a y, you must apply a chain rule. Okay, so hopefully I'm going to demonstrate that right here. Okay, let's just say I'm taking the derivative of a plain x to the third. Okay, I am just taking the derivative of an x. All right, so in other words, my variables agree. Okay, my variables agree because I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. Variables agree, which means that I can just go ahead and use plain ordinary power rule. So derivative here is going to be a 3x squared. Okay, so use simple power rule. Let's even put that on here. Use power rule. Okay, now if I'm trying to take the derivative of, say, a y to the third, okay, notice now that the variables disagree. I'm trying to take the derivative with respect to x, but I've got a y to the third in there. So my variables disagree. All right, which means when I take the derivative, I have to apply a chain. That's your implicit differentiation. I've got to apply a chain rule here. All right, so I'm going to do power rule like normal, so 3y squared, but then the inside function is a y, so I'm going to put a y prime in there. Okay, that's where I have a chain rule. So then I'm going to put use chain rule. And that basically is what this implicit differentiation is. Now, a lot of times, all right, for, for in my classes, I use the y prime notation, okay? Um, a lot of times we get a dy over dx. I, I see a lot of videos I, on YouTube. I see a lot of worksheets where they use different notation. They don't use the prime notation, all right? They use that dy over dx. And the reason I don't and the reason I choose to use the prime is because it, to me, seems Seems like a less cluttered notation it means the exact same thing it's just you know two different mathematicians came up with the two different ways of you know writing what a derivative is you know the prime notation versus that dy over dx all right but to me having that dy over dx right there makes it a lot more cluttered so in if you watch any of my videos with implicit differentiation I always use a y prime right there and that's why I just think it it makes it a much more cleaner problem okay now I want to look at this from like a graphical standpoint as well, okay? Right here, I've got an equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 4, all right? And I've attempted to draw a nice little circle there with radius 2, all right? I have a random point on the circle that I've marked as x, y, okay? Now, what I already have drawn on here is I have the tangent line drawn at that point x, y, and then I have the normal line, okay? And at this point, hopefully, you have already been taught that the normal line and the, and the tangent line are perpendicular to each other, okay? Now, I can, from this drawing, I can calculate the slope of that normal line because it's just rise over run, right? So the change in my y's over the change in my x's, well, if that point's x, y, well, then that means my slope is just a y over x, okay? Then, all right, knowing that the normal line and the tangent line are perpendicular to each other, perpendicular lines should have negative reciprocal slopes, so then that means the slope of my tangent line should be negative x, y, okay? Now, if that's the case, all right, think back to what a derivative is. When you calculate the derivative, you're calculating the slope of the tangent line at a given point, right, or in general, any point along the curve. So then, if that's the case, I should be able to take the equation of that circle, which is the x squared plus y squared equals 4. I should be able to 
implicitly differentiate this because it's in implicit form. I should be able to take the derivative of this. So I should be able to say, okay, I'm going to take the derivative of the left-hand side, d dx of x squared plus y squared. And then d dx of the right side, because I've got to take the derivative of both sides of my equation here. All right, so now this term right here is a plain x. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. My variables agree, so I'm just going to do ordinary derivative there, which is a 2x. Okay, now when I take the derivative d dx of y squared, my variables do not agree. So I've got to remember, okay, this is a y term. I have to include a chain. So I'm y squared. I'm going to take the derivative like normal. So 2y and then y prime. Put that chain in there every time. Equals, all right, over here, derivative of a constant is just going to be 0. Okay, now if I do a little arithmetic to this, all right, let's um, solve this for y prime, which would be my derivative. Okay, so let's subtract 2x from both sides. So 2y, y prime equals a negative 2x. All right, and then let's divide both sides by 2y because I want to solve for my derivative or solve for my y prime. All right, so let's go ahead and actually show that step. So divide by 2y and divide by 2y. 2y and 2y is going to go away over here. And I can cross out the 2 and the 2 on the right-hand side. So then I'm left with y prime is equal to negative x over y. So I have implicitly differentiated this equation. All right, when I take the derivative, I should have the slope of the secant line. And I've already, from the picture, from a graphical standpoint, I already calculated the slope of that line being negative x over y. And when I calculated it algebraically using implicit differentiation, I got the exact same result. All right, so. Um, just um, one quick little example of implicit differentiation, hopefully a better understanding for you of what implicit differentiation is, why you do the things you do, all right, why do you, you know, put the chain only on the y's, hopefully, you know, that got the point was made clear in this, all right, um, I'll definitely. In this video, I'm going to do two examples of implicit differentiation. I am assuming that you have already been taught how to do implicit differentiation and you're just needing to see some um, extra examples, some more practice with this, because maybe there's some things that you're unclear with. Um, so, first of all, with mine, I like to make sure that I am telling the person that's grading my paper that I'm going to take the derivative. So what I do with my students is, okay, here's my original equation, y to the third plus y squared minus 5y minus x squared equals negative 4. I tell my students, okay, we're going to take the derivative of both sides and we're actually going to show d dx. So d dx, because I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. So d dx of y to the third plus the y squared minus 5y minus the x squared, and then we want to do that of both sides, so then I'm also going to do d dx, take the derivative of the right-hand side, all right? And I might note these equations are in implicit form, that's why it's implicit differentiation. I am taking the derivative with respect to x, all right? So then that's the part where, okay, so it's in implicit form, that means I've got um, some y's and x's all mixed up in my equation, all right? When my variables differ. When I'm taking the derivative with respect to x and I've got y's in here, I have to remember to include a chain rule. I have to include a y prime. Okay, And also, I might note in my videos, all right, I do use a y prime because I just think the prime notation for the derivative is um, a lot easier okay, and less confusing because um, a lot of times I see notes and videos on YouTube and they've, they're using a dy over dx instead of the y prime. Um, it really doesn't make any difference, but t this to me just clutters up the equation. And since we've got so much going on in these equations, it makes more sense to use the y prime notation as far as I'm concerned with this. All right, so that's why I'm going to be using the y prime. All right, so I'm taking the derivative of y to the third with respect to x. So I'm going to go 3y squared, and then I'm going to remember my y prime, my chain. Okay, plus the derivative of y squared is going to be a 2y, and then put the chain in y prime. 
the derivative of 5y. It's just going to be a 5, and then I have to put the chain in. Each one of those had y's in them. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. All right, now when I get to this term, okay, it's all x's. We're good there. I can take a regular derivative, so minus 2x equals, and then the derivative of a negative 4 there is going to be 0. Okay, now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look and find every one of my terms that include the y prime, and I'm going to keep those on the left-hand side. Every other term is going to go to the right-hand side, so in this one I only have one that's going to move over. When I cross the equal sign, it's going to become positive. So I'm going to have a 3y squared y prime plus 2y y prime minus 5y prime equals a positive 2x. Okay, ultimate goal in implicit differentiation is to solve for that y prime. All right, so I'm going to factor the y prime out. So y prime, it's gonna leave me with a 3y squared plus a 2y minus a 5 is equal to 2x. All right, I'm trying to solve for y prime, so I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by this polynomial, which will then give me a y prime equal to 2x all over 3y squared plus 2y minus 5. Okay, now as far as implicit differentiation goes, that's pretty straightforward. All right, I didn't have any product rules or, or anything along those lines that's going to make it complicated or anything. I mean, it was just straightforward, work it out, and I was using the y primes. Okay, now in the second example, we're going to beef it up a little bit. All right, start to talk about and think about what we've got going on in this problem before I even start it here. I've got a product going on right here. All right, I would probably group them together as a 3x squared times a y. So there's product rule. All right, and then the other thing to notice about this product rule is that in front of it is a minus sign. All right, which means that when I do product rule, I'm going to create two terms, an extra term in there, and I've got to remember that it is minus everything that I create inside here. So I kind of like to have my students put little parentheses around that to say, okay, I'm going to do the product rule inside here, and then I'm subtracting everything in there, which means I have to go through and change my signs. All right, now here on this one, I have a product rule again. I would probably group the 2y together and the y squared together. All right, now I'm not as overly concerned with this one because the the sign before it is a plus. I'm adding. So if I create more terms, I'm just still going to be adding those terms. So I don't necessarily have to box this off by any means. Now you could, if you wanted to, you know, clearly be able to see where you're going and where you got the stuff from your previous line. Okay, now let's uh, remember that we are taking the derivative. It's going to help you remember you're taking the derivative with respect to x if you write this on here. So d dx all right, not that it has to be in a different color, I was just kind of pointing it out. Uh, d dx of x to the third minus, I'm going to go ahead and keep those brackets in there, 3x squared y, plus I'm going to go ahead and keep these, 2xy squared. All right, and then the derivative d dx of my constant there of 12. Okay, so let's start in on this. All right, I will probably color code this one. I'll probably put this product rule in blue, and I'll probably go ahead and put this product rule in red. Okay, so taking the derivative with respect to x, this is an x term. I'm just going to do him like normal. So 3x squared. All right, minus. All right, now I'm going to do this product rule in blue so that it stands out a little bit. So my first, so 3x squared times the derivative of the second one. Y, derivative of Y, needs to be just a 1, but then Y prime because of the chain. All right, then plus the second, which is Y, times the derivative of the first, which would give us a 6X. So all of that comes from that product right there. All right, now let's go ahead and do this one in red. Okay, so for the next one, I'm gonna have the first, which is 2X, times the derivative of the second, and it's a y, so I will have a 2y y prime plus the second, which is a y squared, and then the derivative of that 2x there is just a 2. 
All right, so that is that product rule. And then equals zero because the derivative of that 12 is going to be a constant. Okay, now on my next line and my next step here, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to um, clean things up, make sure that all coefficients are in front. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the signs right there so that I can drop some brackets. All right, and dropping these brackets I can do right away because that's um, not going to affect anything. So 3x squared. This is going to be a minus. I'm going to put this term together. Minus 3x squared y prime. All right, now I've got to distribute that negative. So this term is a minus. Minus, I'm going to pull the coefficient out in front. 6xy. All right, going here. Plus, I'm going to drop the brackets. All of this put together. I'm going to take that 2 times 2, and it's going to become a 4 out in front. So 4xy y prime. All right, and then there the 2 needs to be in front as well, so plus 2y squared. Okay, now at this point I'm going to go through. I'm going to look for all of my y prime terms. So I have a y prime term here and I have a y prime term here. I'm going to leave both of these on the left hand side, which means that my other three terms have to cross the equal sign, go on the other side. When I cross the equal sign, I want to make sure that I take the opposite sign of what I see. So I'm going to start with my left hand side, negative 3x squared y prime plus 4 x, y, y prime equals. All right, now, um, how you move them over and in what order, not really important. If I move this one over and write it down first, it's going to be negative. That means I'm going to have a negative leading coefficient on that top polynomial, and I generally don't like that. All right, so I'm, this one's a minus, so if I move it over first, it will make it positive, and if I put it in front, then it's going to give me that leading positive coefficient there. So a 6xy, then I can do this one, minus 3x squared, and then minus a 2y squared. All right, personal preference on that, totally, okay? Um, in each of these terms now, I need to factor out my y primes. So y prime comes out, and I have a negative 3x squared plus a 4xy. Right-hand side doesn't change, because I was just working on the left. Okay, now, try and solve for y prime. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by this negative 3x squared plus 4xy. And again, that, that leading term right there is negative, and I don't necessarily want it to be negative. I want to clean up my answer a little bit, so I'm going to switch those two around when I write it on my, as my final answer. So y prime, this will be my numerator, 6xy minus 3x squared minus 2y squared. And then all over, I'm going to switch those terms around. 4xy minus a 3x squared. All right, so again, a kind of straightforward uh, implicit differentiation problem. However, you've got those two products in there, all right? And I would highly recommend, you know, boxing them off because if you don't pay attention, you will definitely drop a negative and it will be right there on this term because you didn't realize it was minus everything in that product rule. So that right there is the negative that usually gets dropped. All right, so in this video, I'm just going to work out one example of implicit differentiation where we've got an e to the y in it. All right, so this would be a, a transcendental function that would be thrown in um, and then on top of the implicit differentiation that's going on in the problem. Okay, so um, to start with, let's see, we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So I'm going to show d dx of the left hand side which would be x e to the y minus the 10x plus 3y and then also taking that d dx of the right hand side. All right now when I go to take the derivative right here I see that there is a product going on right there so I've got to use product rule and there is that e to the y that's sitting there. All right so um, product rule so we will take the first times the derivative of the second. All right, so derivative of an e to the u would be e to the u, u prime. So e to the y, y prime, minus the second, which is e to the y, times the derivative of that x, which is a 1. So all of that right there is just the product rule. Okay, um, here, let's put that plus. 
Sorry, I don't know why I did a minus there. All right, then I've got a minus 10x, so when I take the derivative there, I'll have a minus 10, and then the derivative of that 3y is going to be a 3 for the derivative, and then y prime. The derivative of 0 on that right-hand side is 0. All right, now for this, let's uh, clean some of this up, get rid of the 1, get rid of the dots, and then we will attempt to solve for y prime here. So x e raised to the y, y prime, plus e raised to the y, minus the 10, plus the 3, y prime equals 0. All right, terms with y prime are going to stay on the left. All other terms are going to go to the right-hand side of the equation. When they go to the right-hand side, they change their sign. So on this side, I'll have x e to the y, y prime, the other y prime term, plus 3y prime, equals moving these two terms to the other side. I'm going to have a 10 minus an e raised to the y. On this side, I'm going to want to factor out that y prime. Factoring out y prime, that's going to leave me with an x e to the y plus 3. Right hand side's not going to change. Now I can divide both sides of the equation by x e to the y plus 3, giving me a final answer of y prime equals 10 minus e raised to the y all over x e to the y plus 3. All right, so just one straightforward example of implicit dif differentiation with that transcendental function in there of the e to the y, all right, implementing that product rule right there. Uh, definitely.